What is up guys? My name is Koshma and today we are going to be talking about Ready or Not. Now if you came here to find out what the heck Ready or Not even is, then you came to the right place. If you already know what the game is, then you can gladly skip ahead where I will be talking about the current state of the game and my opinion on it. For everyone else, let's start off by answering your question of what Ready or Not even is, since the name of the game is not very suggestive about it. Ready or Not is a tactical SWAT first-person shooter that takes on the round and destiny of SWAT 4. You might call it your spiritual successor. You are set in the footsteps of a SWAT officer and depending on if you play alone or with your friends, you might be the leader of a SWAT unit. Your objective depends on the scenario you choose on the given mission. This ranges from barricaded suspects to hostages, bomb defusal scenarios and even active shooter scenarios. Your task is to defuse the tense and hostile situations and saving innocent lives. So for this before you buy slash review as in typical old SWAT 4 talk lead manner Talk to entry team, you are cleared for entry. Go and ready. Have you played the SWAT series and specifically the 3D first person variants starting with SWAT 3 and moving to SWAT 4? Did you maybe enjoy the British House mission in COD 2019? and wanted an entire game just like that? Or do you enjoy a nice tactical round of squad with your buddies? If you answered yes to at least one of my questions, then let me tell you why you will most likely enjoy a round of Ready or Not. For those of you who don't know, as of right now, Ready or Not is only available on Steam. You can buy the game directly through the store or through the Void Interactive website. Currently the price sits at 35 euros. The fully released version is going to be 59.99. If you're interested in the so-called Supporters Edition, which can be seen as a deluxe edition of some sorts, then I'll doubt you'll be watching this video anyway. In the Support Edition, you'll get everything that the Standard Edition gets, plus an FBI HRT uniform pack for your officer, the first expansion is included as well, and the digital copy of the Ready or Not soundtrack. Console versions have also been planned to be released, but we do not have a release date just yet. Ready or Not is a grimy SWAT tactical shooter, based in current time and date, in the fictive city of Los Suenos. As the mission screen explains, though with writing errors we'll just overlook, life in Los Suenos is unforgiving. The sidewalks are littered with the tents of the homeless, people clamor for money to keep themselves off the streets, criminal activity is an all-time high. The story of Los Suenos' atmosphere is also captured in certain missions where you can really feel the vibe the developer is trying to give with the city. For example, the very first mission is a crack house. Then you can decide to play a car dealership mission where you can see the tents on the street, implying that homeless people are living on the pavement. Now, If you ask me, that's already more story development than there ever was for Battlefield 2042 till this day. Ready or not and its developer, Void Interactive, push for authenticity and realism in their game. As recent news goes, they've parted their ways with their publisher studio Team17. Now I do not want to go in depth on this, but the latest news article mentioned a future mission that will be held in a school and as you can imagine, the probability of an active shooter scenario in such environment is sadly high. Yet that wasn't the reason Team17 and Void Interactive parted their ways. From a trailer four years ago, you were able to see that this game will add children in the story and also from the looks of it, some sort of classroom for young pupils. The statement that was published by Void Interactive wasn't really clear, but from the looks of it, it sounded rather like they had different intentions with their game than Team17 had. Which kind of proves me the feeling that they would rather cancel their financial support of Team17 and fulfill the wishes of their audience instead of making another Rainbow Six or Call of Duty clone. Which was actually the vision people saw for that game when an early alpha state was released for the players that bought the supporters pack a year ago and shared their thoughts and experiences. Ready or not, hit the Steam shelves on the 17th December 2021, only a few days before they have parted ways with their publisher, Team17. As stated on their blog, they were overwhelmed with the response they got by their audience. As of writing this review, Ready or not had an average player count of 12,000 players, which would rank it somewhere on rank 40 on the Steam charts database, right next to Battlefield 2042. Yeah, that game. Ready or Not can be played in single player and PvE co-op multiplayer. If you don't have any friends playing Ready or Not, you can always search for lobbies online with other officers ready to play missions with you. Ready or Not features multiple voice channel options just like Squad does. You have your local chat and your radio chatter. Personally, I would say that you should most definitely play with a minimum of one friend. You will most likely have a way better experience than you will have with the current state of the art team AI. Now don't get me wrong, Ready or Not has received positive reviews 
all over the internet and on our Steam store page. Since players really thrive their old feeling that the Swan genre gave them. Though it is not all fun and games just yet, you can clearly feel the early access state of the game, especially when you play single player with the team AI on. The third person animations aren't quite there on today's level of standard, and there are also some positioning bugs with the team AI. For me personally, they also move too statically. It's like they run through a script on the exact same walkways they have to go just to get to their scripted position. In some cases, those walkway scripts are way too deep into a room, which I didn't even want them to clear. Anime AI can also be very tricky. Now you can gladly take it as a very hardcore game, but I do not think that someone who's trying to trick you into giving up and throwing his hands up all while holding a shotgun single-handedly can direct the muzzle of the shotgun in your direction within less than a second. Oh well. The game definitely needs some sort of AI tweaking, but please, please do not get scared. Most of the time it is a very decent playable game. I just wanted to point out the current state of the AI, so that if you are someone who gets frustrated very quickly about bugs like these, then you might be better off waiting for a future AI update for this game. Overall, you can die very quickly by AI, only a few bullets are enough to take you down, and sometimes even one is enough for you to be killed. AI, as previously mentioned, also likes to trick you into believing that they are either a civilian or trying to convince you that they are compliant with your commands, only to lift up the lethal weapon seconds later and either take a shot at you or run away. Since AI can also flank you, you should always have someone ready to watch your six. Gunplay feels very, and when I say very, I mean very very good. Personally, I'm a sucker for pleasing animations, just like HOT 2019 had. Those animations were nailed down to the brim. They felt authentic and had a wham to it every time you reloaded a shotgun for example. Ready or not, as of right now, in my opinion, is not on the same level as the hand animated weapons Call of Duty had to offer. I'm only comparing it to Call of Duty 2019 since that game is my personal number one when it comes to weapon animations. Compared to other games, these animations are looking very good. The shooting feels amazing and if I was to shoot a rifle or a pistol in real life, I would imagine it to be just like in Ready or Not. The movement is also a great addition to what SWAT 4 had offered back in the days. Now that you have the leaning while moving feature, you are much more versatile on how to clear rooms. Also, there's a free lean option that lets you lean just how you need it. With the free lean option, you are able to go lower than with your default crouch. And also, higher so you have the chance to peek over a few fences in the game. Yet you sadly cannot climb or mount any obstacles since the jump is more of one of those big steps when you go up a stair. And I guess that would even be higher than what this SWAT operator is capable of right now. You can customize your loadout before you hop into any mission. Weapons can be customized as well as your body armor, head visor and the equipment you will be bringing into the mission such as flashbangs or gadgets. Speaking of gadgets, they have also implemented a few neat gadgets from the SWAT series like the wedge that blocks doors and also the mirror with which you can look under certain doors to see the enemy before you move into a room. By the way, this one is a fictive gadget, so it's up to you if you want to take it into your mission or rather drop it at the HQ. On the weapons bench, you can customize the attachments to your primary and secondary weapons. For primary weapons, you mostly have four attachment choices, sights, barrel attachment, grip and the underbarrel for a flashlight or a laser attachment. You are also offered a shooting range to practice your aim and test out your weaponry. Also kill houses available to you for solo or team practices. You can also be up top on the oversight railing to spectate your fellow officers practicing. That way you might evaluate mistakes and try to fix them before heading into the next dangerous scenario. Now surely, you could be afraid after seeing how little content there is and there is no reason not to. I had the same opinion and luckily though for me, it changed after I played the game. The missions can be played in a variety of places. You might clear entire missions solo with your buddies or with your team AI, however you like to. You can play this game like you played SWAT 4, you can play it like a running gun shooter and imagine to be Call of Duty in a police scenario. But you could also play it the way I personally prefer it. I like to imagine to be as real as possible and use actual real SWAT and military ways of room clearing tactics and implement those into the way me and my friends play this game. By the way, if you interested in how me and my friends play ready or not and implement the strategies be sure to subscribe as i'm going to publish a video about using real life tactics in ready or not and their given use case scenario it'll be awesome coming back to the topic playstyle is not the only thing that keeps me grinding and gives me a feeling of achievement you shouldn't forget the scenarios that void and active have put into your game to keep us busy and trust me they will keep you busy. To clear an active shooter scenario on rank S is near to impossible. At least for me and my buddies. Maybe you are the one to prove us something and to the world. I would gladly see someone achieve that. Missions can be done from within 10 minutes and up to multiple hours. This depends on the way you progress every map and how you clear rooms and take your engagements. This, as I said before, is in my opinion best experience with a group of friends coordinating through the mission like a real SWAT team would. Adding to that, Void and Active recently announced that they have added modern support to the game and here are some of my current favorites. They also opened up a Discord channel for modders. I'll link it down below so you can check it out. Personally, I'm very glad they are emphasizing modding support instead of trying to block it out for financial gain. You can even find the very first map of SWAT 4 on one of the mod sites ready for download. 
Personally, I have set a lot of trust into Vault Interactive whilst I've invested the 35 euros early. Them leaving their publisher so they can get their goals straight without anyone interfering? Wow. Them having the confidence to release the game in the current state, which is a good state, don't get me wrong. This has given me confidence in them. Adding up to that are the posts to which they have held strongly due to what's being shown in this early access build. Guys, hear me out. This is not another AAA game developer who wants to create loot boxes and other shitty content. This game is not there just for money's sake. They put their own and their customers' interests first, instead of being afraid of the negative news just like we saw on the school level. For a long time in the gaming world, we get a developer who truly wants to depict their vision of cruelty of our world and show real day-to-day -day scenes SWAT officers have to go through and they are not afraid to speak out about it. But they are also being very respectful towards those individuals that save lives from a day-to-day -day basis. I think that Void Interactive is a developer's view that cares and listens to their audiences instead of people that never had any intentions into buying their product after all. And this makes me believe that we will have a game with Game of the Year award potential on our hands at least in 2022. Now comes the question whether or not you should buy the game. As always, this question is entirely up to you. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you liked SWAT 4 and have been waiting for a game like that for over 10 years, yes. Yes, this game is for you and the probability that there is another developer studio out there that depicts a SWAT feeling like Ready or Not does is very low. And I assume if there even would be one, they wouldn't be able to compete with Ready or Not's state of game right now. Let's not forget this game has been in development since 2016 and has overgone countless changes to be in its current state. Early Access has given the developer the financial freedom to leave their publisher. I assume there are big things waiting for us in Ready or Not. And if you think this game is for you, then you have to understand that this game is still in Early Access. If you enjoy the gameplay of squad and communications part of the game and also like the scenario of core 2019 the british house mission then you will most likely enjoy this game if you have a flock of friends or just one friend ready to play this tactical game with you then you will have an experience that you either never experienced before or a totally new feeling to the experience you had back in the good old days of swat 4 core pve gameplay my friends thank you for sticking through to the end make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you liked what you saw and if not Gladly hit the thumbs down and comment your opinion or feedback so I can see what I might have missed or did right. As I said, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Peace!